The far-reaching desert is peaceful, but harsh, fit only for the rugged few. UNLV associate professor Frank Van Brukelen studies living ancestors that have outlasted this dry terrain. The Mojave actually means by the water. The Mojave Desert is actually in its infancy. Death Valley had 330 feet of water 10,000 years ago. So there was all these lakes and interconnected streams and that dried out. Between Death Valley and Pahrump is Ash Meadows. Yeah. Truly a fantastic place. Throughout the National Wildlife Refuge are crystal clear springs of fossil water that dates back to the Ice Age. And what's neat is that they're ephemeral. See that right there, that white area? That used to be a spring. So when one dries out... Another one pops up. Frank has spent the past five years researching a small species braving a difficult life. See that little dance that they yeah, do? And they're, yeah. And he's really into her. With the potential for medical advances for humans, pupfish. They're called pupfish because the people who uh, found them, they were chasing each other and they said, oh, it's like little puppies playing. Pupfish are small, about the size of a thumb, but they're survivors of extreme conditions. What once was cool water is now 80 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. This isn't an ideal neighborhood. This is a bad neighborhood, but the fish are li living there. And just because you live in a bad neighborhood doesn't mean that you can't make a living, it's just a little bit tougher living. To survive in the desert, pupfish go without oxygen, essentially holding their breath for hours at a time. We had one animal that in a 24-hour period, in about five hours of this, with just a couple of brief interruptions of oxygen consumption. Frank calls it paradoxical anaerobism. You and I, if we were to not use oxygen, we produce lactic acid, right? So like when we sprint. Sure, but how do pupfish sprint for hours at a time? It looks like what they're doing is producing this ethanol. Alcohol helps them survive. They're sort of like chronic alcoholics. And this fish evolution could help us better understand chronic alcoholism in humans. We could take those lessons and, and figure out, you know, sort of what did they do differently than what we're doing? And maybe we can then take some pharmaceuticals and approach that problem that way. Cancer cells also use anaerobic metabolism, like pupfish, to survive. Maybe our fish can help us to understand why exactly the uh, cancer cells are doing this, and that could then lead to some therapies targeted at that. But producing alcohol takes a toll. Pupfish are an endangered species. We need to protect these areas. Uh, they're not going to come back. The most lethal living conditions are at Devil's Hole. These fish live in very hot water. With water that can reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit, these pupfish produce the most ethanol and as a result have the shortest lifespan. These fish have it really tough. There were only 36 of these fish in 2013. Luckily now there's about 100 of these. Frank came to this alcoholic discovery with the help of undergraduates at UNLV. I'm looking at a bone stained uh, larvae. So it cleared all the uh, tissue out and stains the bone red and the cartilage blue. Twin brothers Austin and Kenneth McKenna are among those forging ahead at the School of Life Sciences. And when I did research, I fell in love, so. I want to be the, the biologist that can attack any uh, question that comes my way. Because of those who work in search of the undiscovered. What we're looking at is really sort of a, um, nature's experiment. Cures might spring from the toughest and tiniest of creatures. Over the course of five years, a majority of the research was done by dozens of UNLV undergraduates. Kenneth just left Duke University for his PhD and Austin as well, but he's going to be staying at UNLV for his doctorate under Professor Van Brukelen. Vicki Gonzalez, News 3. It's a pretty amazing concept. Yeah, isn't it? and what you can find out in the desert, at first glance, it can seem like a, just a rolling wasteland, but there's a lot going on out there. I wouldn't think there were many puddles out there, right. but uh, not only are there puddles, but we've got life. Yep. Yeah, and to think that something could create its own alcohol. I know the wheels are turning <laughs> in mines all around <laughs> yeah. Southern Nevada right now, <laughs> exactly. right? Exactly.